Joining the Riley and Kimmy show is somebody who I consider an expert in the world of autographs and actually the uh, celebrity world when it comes to autographs, and that's Al Wittenberg. Al, you're actually called Uncle Al too, right? To my friends. Okay. Am I a friend? You can call me Mr. Wittenberg. Um, okay, Mr. Mr. Al with me here. I'm not a friend. Um, I thought I was a friend. You can. You can be. Okay. For All right. $20. $20. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple questions about autographs because that is your your yeah. world. That's what you're all part of, right? It appears, yeah. Almost 48 years now. I was going to ask that. How long has it been? 48 years. 48 years. And recently, we've received some attention from some nerds who have been contacting the Riley and Kimmy show saying, what do you feel about that California law which requires a certificate of on authenticity, a COA, with autographs and, or sell selling of an autograph. And I said, I'm going to ask the expert here. And do you think this is a good thing, bad thing? Is it going to have a ripple effect across the country or, or like these big conventions like San Diego Comic-Con? In the first place, the law has been in effect for over 10 years. 10 years. 10 years it's been there. The only thing they've done is modify the law because initially it was written just to cover sports memorabilia. A uh, few lawyers pushed the uh, the attorney general's office and uh, the courts in California and actually added the celebrity autograph stuff. Uh, the, the clincher of the deal is is that if you're fine, found selling bad items, you pay back ten times what oh. the, the fee was, you know, whatever the autograph was sold for. So it's a real deterrent. California's about the toughest law. Um, it needed to be, California has a lot of forgeries in that area, uh, not as bad as Nevada and not nearly as bad as New Jersey. Really? Yeah. So will this affect conventions, do you think, like San Diego Comic-Con? I think COAs in general are really a joke. If you don't have the person that stands behind it with any kind of credentials, it could be anybody. I mean, anybody with a, you know, with a uh, you know a publisher program on the computer can make a COA and you can make it look as fancy and as ornate as you want but truthfully when I do court work the court requires what's called chain of evidence in other words when I submit to them you know to go into a court case you have to be able to prove step by step how you came to the conclusion and without that, you're really kind of like, it's a crapshoot. I mean, but if the person had credentials and you could look up those credentials that were available, sure. I know some artists, like uh, John Beatty as an example, will, with his signatures, he'll offer a COA right at the table. Well, I think it's a good idea. I mean, you know, what happens a lot of times, the only reason the COAs exist is for resale. So if the artist is doing it himself, he's kind of protecting the person he's selling it to, which is a good, not a bad idea. Do, in the world of autographs, I think I've asked you before about this, and I mentioned to a, one of the nerds, I said auto pens. They had no idea what I was talking about, the auto pen. That's out there a lot, right? Yeah, I actually teach a course on this. To how to spot it? How to spot them. Uh, there's, there's not just auto pens. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. There are things called uh, steel stamps. And a steel stamp is like the old kind of uh, printing press okay. where they would actually, it would be a steel stamp that had the signature on it that would actually push into the photo and it looks like somebody signed it. Uh, there's rubber stamps, there's pre-printed that are, some of them are damn good. You really need a, you know, a good magnifying, you know, glass to be able to detect that. There's a ton of stuff that's out. There's also proxy signatures where somebody authorizes. There was a great uh, debate not too long ago about Charlton Heston. He had such an ornate signature, nobody could believe, right, you know, that he had a secretary, and he did. She could reproduce his signature. Really? That well? The only thing that's the difference is, is that with Hessen himself, he would add the R, she would not. Whoa. So. That's, that's unbelievable. And forgeries, increasing in the world? I mean, are we seeing a spike in it uh, globally? Yeah, well, you're in a funny position now because with them taking cursive writing out of school and with the uh, the overall ignorance of the celebrities nowadays, they just they use what's called the Sharpie swirl. A, a, sh a Sharpie swirl. What is a Sharpie swirl? Sharpies can sign on anything. Years ago, if you signed in fountain pen, if you got flourishy, it would just go all over the place, even with a, uh, a ballpoint. But when you sign with a Sharpie, you have creative license to scribble. And people like 
let's say that sign well is like Johnny Depp, but it's a scribble. Okay. I mean, you know, you bring it to a signature expert, you know, it's not going to cut it because what they look at, what I look at particularly, is I know I look at things like checks or documents, anything like that, because usually they'll take their time on that. George Clooney is a great example. You see a George Clooney check, you can read the signature. You see George Clooney in person, you can't read it. So the forgers take advantage of that just by taking a bunch of photos and taking a Sharpie and just going, well, he was drunk that day or whatever, you know. And that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's going to get to the point where modern signatures signed like that will basically have no value because there's no way to verify. Really? Yeah. Now, speaking of Johnny Depp, is it a true story? I don't know if we've talked about this in the past that you kind of gave him his professional start. I gave him a, a gig is what I gave him. I, he, I used to live in a town called Miramar. And down, it's down south by Miami. And uh, he was... Uh, he was going to school there, Miramar High at the time, and his father was the head of the water, you know, the okay. Mount Tor water thing, and, it, and we lived right by the water thing, so I knew his father pretty well. And I was putting together a, a festival for the town, which I still do today, God damn it. Wow. And I, you know, his father said, you know, can you use them? And I was like, well, I never heard of them. And he said, well, they're playing in the garage. Would you come over? So I walked over, heard him play in the garage, and I said, yeah. And then he, he asked me, Johnny asked me, he says, is how much do we make? And I said, well, how's $100 sound for the whole group? And they were delighted. You know, there's only four of them, so, you know, wow. they each made 25 bucks, you know, so, and they were good. I, I enjoyed them, you know, but I never knew that he would, you know. Wow. I mean, he was a nice kid. So, yeah. fast forward years down the road, did you or have you encountered Johnny Depp autographs? And Oh, yeah, 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 all the time. I mean, he's, he's really good at premieres walking, the, what's called walking the line. He will walk the line and sign and do selfies and the whole thing. He's, he's one of the few. Uh, you know, conversely, if you had somebody like, you know, Cameron Diaz, she just ducks in and, wow. you know, just disses everybody that's waiting there. So he's like old school Hollywood. He is. He has an ethic. Wow. You know, I mean, it's, 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 you either have it or you don't. And many of them don't. It just doesn't, you know. So it's declined because of the lack of the studio. They used the studio used to pamper and also guard them, right? I mean, absolutely. And they also would, you know, it was part of their contract. If you worked at Warner Brothers, you had to answer your own fan mail. I mean, that was it. Now at MGM, they had a pool of people that answered the fan mail with catch things and all like that. But Warner Brothers, uh, you know, they, they had a Warner Brothers basically at the time said we can make money off of this so they would send a free little teeny photo said if you want a bigger one send us two dollars and we'll send you a bigger one and the stories of like joan crawford true that she used to love to Absolutely. sign she up until the day she died she signed betty davis same way um you know there were people that worshipped their fans knew that that's where their bread and butter was coming from unlike today they they don't seem to give a damn that's sad. Yeah. That's well, you know, you have like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio will not sign for anybody. I didn't know that. No, he just doesn't sign. So, if you're if somebody's really getting into the autograph scene as an investment, I think you've told me in the past mm, historical figures that's ones to go for. Or sure, yeah, you know, uh, Hollywood, you know, any kind of entertainment comes and goes. If I say the word to you, you know, uh, Russ Colombo, you, you have no idea who that is. But in the '30s, he was as big as Sinatra. I mean, or maybe bigger, but as time passes, people don't get that anymore. The same thing with a lot of the, the people of the golden age of Hollywood that made more movies than some of these new people ever considered, but their names are losing that international name recognition. And as it loses international name recognition, value goes down. So a Buzz, Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, things like that? Never lose money on that because they're historic figures. People read about them in the history books and all like that. I think uh, uh, Buzz charges, the last time I, I checked with him, he charges 400 bucks an autograph, a pop. And Gene Cernan, who was the last man on the moon, charges 300 Now, when I did them, they were charging 20 bucks a pop like everybody else. You know, you did the astronaut shows way back when. Do that, yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it's changed a lot. Everybody's got uh, two things. Everybody's gotten very greedy. And uh, I think selling online has changed the dynamics a lot. Okay. Well, Al, I know you're going to be at Claremont Con coming up in November, November 20th, a Sunday. And you will have autographs there. And I'm sure you would look at people's autographs, correct? Yeah, without a doubt. I, I always enjoy that. Right. It's always a lot of fun. We'll put a link to Al's services, and we'll have that on our website, also on this video as well. And if somebody has autographed questions, you're the person to go to, right? Well, around here, yeah. 
I would say that. Okay. It, it keeps me in, you know, bean dip. All right. Keep my Uncle Al happy, and we look forward to seeing you again real soon, buddy. Thanks very much.